Shalom. Today we are going to find out what happened to Adam's rib. In Genesis 2.21, we read, And Yahweh God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. One of his ribs is the standard translation for achat mitzvot In almost all the versions, the English versions, you will see this, ribs. However, in the New English translation, we see that it says part of the man's side. In checking with the other translations of this word, sila, we see that it is also translated as side, chamber, beam, or board. With respect to the tabernacle, it is written in Exodus 25:14, And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. And also in Ezekiel 41, 5, it says, After he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber, four cubits, round about the house on every side. So the idea of side is probably closer to what we're looking for than the actual word rib. Here we see a picture of the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, a representation and you can see that the boards which stand upright to which the linen curtains are attached very much resemble ribs. In fact, there are other places in Tanakh that mention rib, specifically the fifth rib, and several people are killed by being stabbed there. For example, Second Samuel 3.27. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Yahab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. If we look in the Hebrew, there is no word for rib there. It only mentions the word hachomesh, which has something to do with the fifth something. So uh, this word tzelah is not specifically attached to the word rib, but it is attached to the idea of the side. Going back to Genesis 2, we see that this tzela, which is translated as rib, or part of the side, which Yahweh Elohim took from the man. The verb of what he did to it is translated as made. It is literally from the word bana to build. He built it to be the woman, Isha, and he brought her to the man. The word tzela, which is Strong's number 6763, is also translated in one place as halting. Jeremiah 20.10 For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. The word halt here is used in uh, an older English version, the King James use. It really means stumbling or slipping or falling or limp or limping or lame, and we will look at that. When we hear the word halt in modern English, we think of stopping altogether. From an etymology site online, we see that halt means to walk unsteadily or move with a limping gait. And this use of the word halt is earlier than the word halt to stop altogether. For example, in Matthew 18:18, 18, 18, it says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So since the person will still be entering, we know that they didn't stop, but they are entering either limping or lame or maimed. The original root, Salah, is listed under Strong's 6760, where it says halt, limp, or lame. And the first use thereof is in Genesis 3231. Speaking of Jacob, and as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. We know that he was limping. What has limping got to do with the side? How are the limping and the rib connected? 
we can look at it in terms of the idea that the person who is limping is favoring one side, or perhaps they are curled over to one side, which makes them appear uh, like a rib in the fact that it is curved. We find another group of people who are limping in the prophets. Micah 4, verses 6 and 7. In that day, saith Yahweh, while I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that halteth a remnant, and her that was cast off for a strong nation. And Yahweh shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, even forever. Also in Zephaniah 3.19, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Clearly something happening in the end times. Please notice that all these are female. In a parable of the end time wedding banquet, Yeshua teaches this from Luke 14, 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt and the blind. Again, we see this uh, word halt translated in some later translations as lame or crippled. It is the Greek word cholos. We see that those are also among the ones who come to Yeshua during his lifetime. Matthew 15.30 and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Yeshua's feet, and he healed them. If we go back to Genesis 2.21, where Yahweh Elohim originally took this part, this side of Adam, and we look at it in the Septuagint, we see the word which is translated as side or ribs, as pleuron. Perhaps you can hear inside that an English word plural, uh, P-L-E-U-R-A-L, the disease pleurisy. These are things that have to do with the lungs, which are hidden and enclosed inside of the ribs. It is the same word which is used in the Greek in the description of the crucifixion and the piercing of Yeshua's side. John 1934, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, his pleura, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Going back to Micah 4, 7 and talking about the ones who are lame for a halting, we will look at another word, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and Yahweh shall reign over them, in Mount Zion, from henceforth, even forever. The word for remnant here is Sha'arit. You see it also in Jeremiah 23, 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither they, I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Who is this limping remnant? They are the ones who will come back in the end times. They are the ones that Yeshua was crucified for and the ones that he has come to gather. In John eleven fifty two, it is written, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Also written of the remnant in Romans nine twenty seven, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of children of Israel shall be as a sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Who is this limping remnant that shall return? We learn from the Song of Songs that it is the bride. In chapter 8, verse 5, Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? She is limping. I raised thee up under the apple tree, and there thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. This is the remnant bride. 
of the one upon whom she is leaning, it is written in Song of Songs 3.6, Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant? And again in Isaiah 63.1, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Botsra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is the bridegroom, Breshit, in the beginning, the first word of the Bible. The first letter is a bet, and it is a preposition. It means in. The rest of the word, Breshit, has to do with things of the beginning. If we rearrange the letters of Reshit, we see that we find She'arit, the remnant. That which was the bone in the beginning is the bride, the wife, the one who comes limping home at the end. She is the remnant. As it is written, Magid Mereshit Acharit, Umikedem Asher Lo Na'asu, Omer, Atati Takum, Yeshayahu Memvav Pasuk Eser Isaiah 46.10 Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure.